Well, hello there. It is 7.30. The 26th of December. Hello, Ella. And we are having... Episode 9 of Cast Talks. 9. It's splendid, really. I know, I know. We've come a long way already. So much going on. But the year is almost over, luckily, and a new year is upon us in no time at all. <sighs> but glad to have all of you folks here with me. And to everybody who's watching in the future, and to the people here now, I hope that you had a lovely Christmas 2020. Today's episode is mostly going to be about past Christmases, about things regarding the holidays, and about positivity around the holidays itself. So if that's not your thing, you might want to skip this one. I'm glad to hear that, Ella. And I'm glad to hear from you in general. I know we barely got to talk earlier today. But yeah, I, I had a better time this year than I usually do, which, you know, not, not too bad, honestly, not too bad. Yep, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. So today we're beginning with some, uh, some good news. Two best friends light up the holidays for single parents, households in Ohio that might not have money for gifts. Two special friends in Cincinnati, Ohio, our area, have created merrier Christmases for children and families who were affected by the pandemic. And it was inspired by the experience of gratitude they both felt growing up. Jordan Jenkins and her best friend, Skylar Beavers, started Make a Kid Merry an organization that provides holiday gifts to kids the same support their own moms received years ago. Growing up, both Jordan and Skylar were raised by single mothers, and this fueled their passion this year to make sure they pay it forward to offers support for other kids of single parent homes during the holidays. The impact of these times on numerous families have been difficult, so the dynamic duo decided to set as their goal providing gifts for 50 kids. The university students asked for community donations and enlisted friends as elves to beautifully wrap the gifts and deliver them. We both come from single mother households, so we both had to be sponsored for Christmas before. Jenkins told WCPO News. We just wanted to be able to create a way to give back to our community. That's pretty lovely. <laughs> Have a little break, yeah. That's not a bad thing at all, is it? Have a little break. Ah. <sighs> Feels pretty good, actually. But yeah, my Christmas was uh, was pretty uneventful, but I think I prefer it that way. I've never really had a seriously hectic or seriously big Christmas before in my life. Most of the time, it has been me and a small group of people, my family specifically, doing something very small or very... I uh, calm or very sedated, you know, nothing 
uh, too extreme these days. Though in the past there were moments of uh, high emotion and gifting and things like that. That sort of that sort of cooled down for the most part. And you know, as somebody who wants to be in touch with how they felt as a child. I do miss a part of it. You know, I do miss a part of it. But really, it's all right. I think I'll be able to get that someday. It just might take a while before we get back to it, so to speak. <sighs> but we're here now to have a relaxing evening. So we're going to begin with some lovely coal and chill Christmas icebreakers which I'm not really using to break any ice I'm just using them because they're good questions in general so we're gonna start with that and we're gonna move from there see where it takes us All right, what's the best or worst Christmas present you've ever received? I'll answer both of these. So the best Christmas present I've ever received. Oh, it's a tough one for me because I don't have the best memory for this. What I'm remembering right now, which might not be the best, mind you, was a video game by the name of Dark Messiah of Might and Magic. It's a fun game, and I was really, really interested in having it. Uh, not just for the sake of playing it, but the prestige around owning a new video game is uh, hype-inducing in a young child. And I suppose I was a part of a cycle I, I guess you could call it uh, a cycle of intrigue and relent because, you know, you get interested and excited for a video game and then you eventually have it and then the hype and the magic around it, it does fade and you are released from it, so to speak, where you don't have to worry about it anymore. But it still affects you, you know, you're still affected by it. And from that moment on, you have to move on and just try to, you know, take it easy. Just try to enjoy the game and move on. And the worst present I've ever gotten. Let's see. If I really think about it, I, I have to say, There haven't been many times where I've gotten presents where I've just felt like, oof, this is bad, or something like that. But if it really does count, uh, like a small thing, which I'm not certain it does count, but it's getting caramel chews, uh, little caramel candies. I am not a caramel fan. Honestly, I find it atrocious. <laughs> I find it very difficult to eat. I have a awful, awful time actually eating them and enjoying them. And when I actually did I get receive this, I just just I really didn't enjoy it. But it's just the problem with candy is sometimes you find one you don't like. There we go. Just updating the name. The post-Christmas special. There we go. <sighs> I hope you folks out there can think of something good that's happened in this Christmas or past Christmas. 
regarding gifts and giving, because there is certainly uh, gratitude to be given to the people in our life that are able to either afford or have the time to be there and give us something good. So I'm grateful, certainly, for those people in my life, but also I'm really grateful for the ability to admire and enjoy and take in the details of a gift. Because some people don't even have that. And it's a wonderful thing. Number two. Describe a Christmas present you wanted badly as a kid, but never received. Let's see. I have never really wanted that much. Maybe a few things in my life. <sighs> I believe that something I was so interested in at some point was a particular kind of G.I. Joe action figure or uh, maybe a skateboard, something like that. But honestly, I never wanted to have anything ridiculous or out of reach, you know, I've, I've always wanted something that was just simple and easy to have. I guess I'm easy to shop for it too. I just, I, I like it. most things people gift me. I'm just happy that they thought of me. So I don't need that much in the way of uh, expense or anything like that. You know, I'm just, I'm just grateful to be here and to have people that care about me. Name something. This is number three about Christmas that most people like, but you hate, or at least dislike. I do not enjoy Christmas music for the most part. I don't remember exactly when this started, but I have always remembered feeling very negative about Christmas music, and that's not like me to feel negative about something so specific and for reasons that don't really make sense to me, but uh, it is the, the rhythm, the tune, the lyrics. Just something about it just never sat well with me. And I, I really can't say why. But that's what I think. Number four. If you could only have one type of Christmas candy this year, what would you choose? If I was still eating candy, mind you. Uh, I'm not really because of uh, my gums are very sensitive to it these days, but... Uh, I would eat, like, those Laffy Taffies or uh, Airheads or one of those Nerds Rope. Ah, Nerds Rope are so good. They're so bad for you, though. <laughs> ah, it's diabolical. Whoever came up with them was a genius. But they are quite bad for your health, unfortunately. <laughs> It's true, candy canes are very common and favored, but I've never really liked them. I always end up making them sharpen to a point by accident, and I, I never intend to make a spike out of them, but they always end up that way, and then I'm like, I don't want to eat this, it's spiky, and so I stop, <laughs> and I guess that's just been my experience, and I don't, I don't like particularly hard candy myself, you know, I'm more into <laughs> well, you know, there's other types of candy canes, too. There's, like, sour ones and sweet ones and stuff like that that aren't mint, but... I do agree with you there. I don't like mint by itself. Uh, I like... What, you know, there's, like, a gum that I enjoy. It's not peppermint, I don't think. It's whatever the, the original flavor of five gum is. Uh, that, that one. Not Is it cool mint? I don't know. It's something, but... Five gum is good. Well, sometimes. <laughs> The original flavor of Five Gum was good. Addicting, even. It had such good rapping and such good advertising. <sighs> I remember when I first had my first piece. Spearmint. That might be the one. That might be the one. I can't actually remember at this point, but I believe you. What holiday movie or special do you watch over and over again? So, this movie isn't a holiday movie, but it holds a very special place in my heart. The movie is, uh, I think it's a 19... 
1953 movie is what I'm going to say, by the name of Harvey. And it stars uh, James Stewart as the main character, Elwood P. Dowd. And it has some of the most genuine uh, acting that I've seen in my life. Not only that, but the moral of having a character who is like kind of insane, but that's an okay thing. You don't need to cure him or to rid him of his insanity. You can just let him live his life because he's not hurting anybody. You know, in fact, he's really happy. And how that's a beautiful thing. And we should just sort of let them be happy. Let them be crazy and do what they want to because they're not hurting anybody. I watched the Blues Brothers movie. I may make it a tradition because it was pretty great. Well, Ella, I have never seen that movie. But I have heard good things about it. That's one of the few movies where I think I enjoy, like, the look of the main characters, especially Dan Aykroyd. He's got a he's got a cool look in that movie. Uh, Dan Aykroyd I don't like very much in most movies, and I've recently watched the Ghostbusters uh, again. I think this was last year, and I guess it's not that recent, is it? But I didn't like it. <laughs> which feels sacrilegious to me because my parents all love it and my brother and sister love it too but then I watched it by myself with a friend and I was like oh man why isn't it working why isn't it hitting it's not like it's on zero cylinders the whole time I was like what happened did I just stop liking this movie or I don't know I don't know it's just different by itself maybe but the Blues Brothers has a lot of uh, acclaim, so I imagine it was a good watch. And I'm glad that you're taking in new traditions. Me and my family, we went Christmas watching, or sorry, Christmas light watching this year. And there are some very elaborate displays on uh, the suburban households nearby, the neighborhoods alike. Some of them are downright uh, lavish, you would even say. And one of them was actually tuned to a Christmas radio. And there was a rock song, Christmas Rock, that was on. And it was captivating, if nothing else. It, it had a energy to it that I've never seen before. So that was something that I enjoyed. But honestly, some of them were just bit ugly <laughs> which isn't fair because you know Christmas lights are Christmas lights and you can't really judge them all the same uh, but some of them I found to be almost heavenly in their appearance the way they made everything look but some of them were gaudy or tacky or even downright ugly that was not most of them luckily there was also a giant snowman he looked like he was about 40 feet high and you may think that's crazy I know it's crazy <laughs> he was he was huge he was absolutely huge oh excuse me sorry about that folks hit my hit my microphone stand But I'm glad you found something that you like, Ella. What's the weirdest, ugliest Christmas decoration you've ever owned? So, uh, I, I would say that in the past, I've had a, uh, a surplus of, I, I want to call them those, those baubles, you know, those, the balls that you put on Christmas like ornaments. I've had a lot of ornaments in my life that I've seen, and this is not the fault of anybody in like a, in a taste sense, because the reason that they had it up, the reason that they were using it was they were really grateful and happy and joyous at the photo that was on it, but the photo, uh, <laughs> the photo was of leave a mother who had just given birth to a child and she just looks so tired and so like 
uh, dismayed and so just uh, absolutely at the end of her of her rope. She was exhausted and it just looked like so oh, so put through the ringer. Her husband was there holding the baby and she was like sort of hugging him the whole time, but she basically had passed out on her, on his shoulder. And I just thought it was it was very <laughs> it was a moment of of joy for both of them, I'm sure, but she did not look like she was doing well, which I'm sure many people post birth look that way. But it came off to me as being particularly <laughs> difficult to look at. <sighs> not to mention the baby wasn't very pretty either. But not all babies start out pretty. Some people were ugly as a child that grew up to be beautiful. And even ugly children are beautiful in their own way. Though I still might think they're ugly, at least to me. What was Christmas like when you were growing up? Christmas was a back and forth for me because my both of my parents suffer from uh, mental unwellness in their own ways. So it was quite bipolar for me. Uh, a little scary. In fact, I would even say that I didn't enjoy it most of the time. A lot of it was the mix of excitement and glee that comes to any, you know, any child that has seen commercials or enjoys the idea of Christmas as a way to get toys or really anything. There are definitely ways that a person could be like overwhelmed by the idea of Christmas, right? The colors, the lights, the tree, the candy, the presents, or even the snow, depending on where you live. But I lived in uh, very far southwest, so I didn't really get any snow uh, ever, except for one very strange day where it snowed for like uh, about 10 minutes. But that was not on Christmas either. What ended up happening was that I, uh, I, had, I was driving to school uh, in the passenger seat with my mother, and we were stuck in traffic just on the outlet to get into the school. And... You know, it just started, snowflakes just started coming down. Almost perfect snowflakes from what I remember. So I stepped out of the car and looked up and it was snowing in California. <laughs> snowing in California. Can you believe that? Crazy. But yeah. Uh, you know, Christmas, it lost a lot of its shine as, as my years have gone on. And I want to give some of that shine back someday. So that's my goal. One day is to regain that shine. Who is the toughest person you have to buy for this Christmas? Well, I haven't really been able to exchange gifts for quite some time because of my own shortcomings, of course. But if I was going to try and buy for someone, my father might be the most difficult because he would accept gratefully any gift you could get for him. But to give a gift that he would be overwhelmed or overjoyed at, I find like that would be a little difficult. But I would just ask him what he wanted. But to get him something without asking him, that would be difficult because I don't quite know what he would enjoy. What is the one thing you are most grateful for this holiday season? I am grateful that I have made it to the age of 25. I am grateful that I have this stream and that I have this ability to talk to people and enjoy people's company and to be with them. I'm grateful that I have so many friends that I have so many kind people in my life and that I have an overwhelming abundance of kindness in myself. And I hope that you folks can be grateful for something like that too. Share one vivid Christmas memory, good or bad. I remember very well when my sister bought me a 
set of three Japanese samurai swords. And looking on it now, it is a bit typical for a person in my position during that time to have wanted them. And I feel as though it was stereotypical almost, but I won't get too far into that. I remember she made me close my eyes before she brought it out. And I remember my eyes being closed and me being almost too excited, if you've ever felt that way, where it's too exciting to sort of feel like anything else. You're overwhelmed by your excitement. And I was so overwhelmed that I found myself kind of unable to exist in that moment without sh like shifting around and wiggling. And finally, when she said, open your eyes, and this was after me hearing her shift things around a little bit, I opened them, and it was this, I guess you could call it a wooden rack of some kind where you could put all three samurai swords onto. The top one was a short, a dagger, the second a short sword, and the third a long sword. Uh, I have had these for over 10 years now. And I have, you know, taken them apart and disassembled them, tried to clean them, tried to do a number of things with them. And I see now that what matters more to me than the actual weapons themselves is that my sister thought of me and th thought of something that she might get me that I would really like. And that matters most. What's your favorite or least favorite Christmas song? I think the song that I dislike the most is uh, Last Christmas. I don't like that it's just the same line repeating over and over again. That bothers me. But that's OCD for you. If you could travel anywhere for Christmas, where would you go? I'd like to go to Tokyo and see what their Christmas celebration is like in... Uh, I don't know what the plaza is called where that it all happens, but the biggest place in Tokyo where they celebrate the most Christmas stuff. You know, I'd love to see that. Because they put so much work into their displays and it's very heartwarming to see. Ooh, but then again, Paris might be nice too. There'd be plenty of places where if I was going to go see Christmas, uh, Christmas lights, then I'd be very happy to go see them. What's the most memorable thing that's happened to you since last Christmas? I think the most memorable thing that's happened to me is going in for uh, my arm treatment at the physical therapist seeing people respond to the way I spoke and getting an inside opinion on people's world and life and being asked questions and having things to say and do and just talking to people, being there, hearing them, and responding. That was something I got from being at the physical therapist and it's difficult to overstate how powerful it can be to have friends, even if they're just friends by profession. They were still friends, and maybe the most memorable moment is when the owner of that particular facility said to me over the phone that everybody missed me being there in my absence of going to the hospital, that they had all formed an, a bond and attachment to me, and that they thought I was a very special person. Even thinking about it now, I almost feel unworthy of those kind words. That's my own problem. 
but it does do something to me. It does make me feel something. And so I have to remember that I earned those words, you know. I was the person that I am, and they feel that way because in some small way they love me. And that's something that's hard to get from anybody. But I got it, and I have to remember that. What's your least favorite item on your, on your Christmas to-do list? My least favorite item is getting people together to actually open presents. I don't know why. I don't mind shopping for people or going out to get stuff for them. That's fine with me. I don't like getting people into the room to actually do it. I hate the anticipation. Clean up decorations, that's one too. I haven't had to do that in a long time, but that's... That's one that I can imagine being difficult. Oh, in fact, I saw uh, somebody just today who was cleaning up Christmas decorations. Uh, he looked like a Christmas uh, decorum professional. One of those guys that comes up and actually does your decorations for you. That sort of thing. He was removing the pegs, the white plastic pegs from the sides of the building and trying to scoop them up with a rake. <laughs> what a job. Would you rather have three feet of snow for Christmas or no snow at all? Man. If I had to choose. I would prefer no snow to that much snow. I'd rather have something in the middle, to be honest, but... If I have to choose, I will choose no snow. Though it is not as fun to choose that, I know. This is for my own sake and the health of basically me and the people I live with. I would prefer things to be easier that way. Plus, we still get some snow anyway. Just a little bit. If someone offered you a gift card to any store you wanted, which one would you choose? Just Amazon. Amazon's fine. <laughs> Three feet. If it was a warm day and the snow was gonna melt, I completely agree. That is a good way of that's a good way of doing it. Yeah, I'd be I'd just want an Amazon gift card so I can buy some clothes for myself. That's all I'd want. That's good enough for me. In fact, if I could get that, I'd be happy. I'd be happy as a clam. What's your favorite holiday? Or least favorite? I'll answer both. My favorite holiday is Halloween. I really do enjoy the masks and the outfits and costumes, uh, the lights and the, the free spirit that comes with people carving pumpkins and jack-o'-lanterns. The trust people have in each other to go door to door and ask for goodies and treats. The sovereignty that every parent has to go out with their children and to have a good time. You know, the love and creativity and spookiness. It's something that you can only get on Halloween. It's a day where it feels like anything could happen. You enjoy Christmas because in general, the days before and after, there's so much good feeling and whatnot. You feel festive and happy, even if you aren't celebrating or whatever. I do admit that's true. I feel that way as well. For me, it does help battle the negativity that I am influenced by because of other things. But certainly, that's something I think about. Even though I don't like scary movies very much, I do enjoy uh, quite a bit. I do enjoy quite a bit the uh, mood, the ambience of Halloween. If that makes any sense.
that's certainly something that has been a thought for me for a little while. My least favorite holiday is Thanksgiving. <laughs> I don't like any of the food in Thanksgiving, not even the pie very much. I'll eat pumpkin pie because it is nourishment and sometimes it's okay. But I mean, I don't like cranberries very much or turkey. How many eat turkey? And gosh, I'm so negative tonight. Sorry about that, but it's true. I don't like Thanksgiving very much. Thanksgiving is not my favorite. What is your favorite character from a Christmas themed movie, book, or TV special? Uh, my favorite Christmas themed movie. I like Jack Frost. Uh, I don't really know all of the iterations of Jack Frost, but I think he's a cool character. Uh, I think that uh, South Pole uh, character, South Pole guy, is cool. I also like Santa Claus. I, I think that Santa Claus is an interesting character as well. And I think that giving out gifts is something that I would be very happy to do myself. And I also think that... I think that... I think uh, having dominion over ice is something cool too. So that would be that would be interesting. What's the best gift you've ever given someone? Oh gosh, that's gonna have to rack my brain for that one. Let's see. The best gift I've ever given someone. I honestly can't remember on that one, but maybe we'll come back to it. If you were Santa Claus, what type of cookie would you want to be left out for you on Christmas Eve? An oatmeal raisin cookie. A very good one. A chewy one. That would be fantastic. Just chewy and uh, warm. Out of the oven if possible. Oatmeal raisin is very good. It's my favorite. Name three words that best describe Christmas for you. <sighs> Sparkling. Triumphant. glow sparkling triumphant glow uh, it feels like a triumph just getting this far in the year honestly describe a funny Christmas card you have given or received my sister was given a Christmas themed uh, Star Wars gift card with R2-D2 sort of going crazy whenever you opened it up and it was to the theme of Jingle Bells. Was it Jingle Bells? It was. Uh, that was funny. Would you rather build a snowman, go sledding, have a snowball fight, or stay inside drinking hot cocoa? Um... I'd rather build a snowman, but I'm okay with all of these. Honestly. These are all really good if you ask me, but I haven't... Sledding or hot cocoa, yeah, I can see that. I don't really drink uh, cocoa myself, but if I could have a, build a snowman, go sledding, have a snowball fight, and drink hot cocoa on the same day, it'd be pretty rain. Uh, it's, it sounds like a nice day to me. I haven't, I don't think I've ever gone sledding. So I, I don't actually know quite what that's like, but I'd, I'd love to try it. The true meaning of Christmas is humanity. 
like all holidays, it's about humanity. At least that's what I think. And that is it for our Christmas questions for right now. We got through all 25. And good time as well. And now it's on to our random word generator. Our first word for tonight. Cousin. I have a lovely uh, family, extended family of cousins. They've always been very nice to me. And especially my cousin, uh, whose name begins with a D. He was always the coolest, and he always had these cool uh, <laughs> platinum tips to his hair. I always thought that was amazing and radical you know what kid doesn't love that though in the day he used to bring over cases of Mountain Dew oh, man that was so bad for me <laughs> foundationally flawed my uh, my health I'm sure but just the surge of strength and power that came after drinking that first Mountain Dew. I was so high, I could barely get to sleep, and it was a high that stuck with me for a while, and I tried to chase that first high for a long time, uh, drinking more and more energy drinks and stuff like that, but, you know, you have to accept when you can't get that, and I accepted that eventually and moved on, which was probably very good for me. But my view of my cousins has always been good. They're all very nice to me, and I think they're all very nice people. But I guess I, I don't know them very well at this point, uh, because it's been so long since I've seen them. And, you know, the distance wasn't the only thing that kept us apart. It was also the... It was also the... mental stuff as well that kept me apart from them because I was very I guess nervous to the idea that they would see me and think worse of me for the things I was going through which is how most people going through trauma and uh, difficulty and horrific life experiences go through you know they always worry that everyone's going to think like worse of them. Not always, excuse me. They often worry that the people are going to think worse of them for having gone through it and for having experienced them, which is very scarcely the case. But that's, that's how that goes. And I do wish I could see my cousins more. That's what I'll say. Stupid. Not that one. Community. That's a good one. Community is a wonderful thing. It helps us understand where we are in the world and the people that we belong with. And I remember that there was an extremely lengthy period of time where I was finding my community something I struggled with uh, was coming to terms with the fact that I didn't have a community to fit in with for quite some time. And so I tried to fit in anywhere that I could find. You know, you'd find a place and then you'd try and I'd fail. And I'd try and try and try and eventually I'd find something. But 
there was a period where I was just trying over and over again, getting myself into problems, into problematic situations, and ending up hurting myself in the process. So what I would do was I would just keep trying over and over, keep trying to find something good to, to keep with me, to, to fit in somewhere. And what I was trying to do was I was trying to be beloved and sought after and craved by a certain group of people to be a part of a family, a family I didn't feel like I was being satiated by at the moment, at the time. And that was true. I wasn't getting a lot of family closeness back then. So I felt the need to seek it out in other places for other sources of closeness. And I did that for years, for years, trying to find a surrogate family and what I eventually came to the realization of is that you can have as many of these members of community and family as you'd like, and you can actually come closer to these people than anyone else that you've ever been with. Girlfriends or boyfriends or partners, companions, friends, best friends. But there is always something different about family. Blood, family that is. And even if you never meet them until you're 40 or 50, you can always know the difference because meeting somebody from your bloodline, from the people who are close, not necessarily emotionally, but physically close, <laughs> maybe biologically is a better word for it. There's something different about it. You know, something special. And I found out that I can't find or replicate that with an online relationship. And that was hard for me, you know, knowing that I couldn't just make it appear because it's what I wanted, but I couldn't just make it happen. So I had to try and find some other way. And that was getting back to a more close position with my real life family. Oh, it was tough. I've gotten a lot closer with them now than I've been for most of my life. It was tough, though. It's always tough sort of getting back together after a long period. And it was definitely a long period for me. Mercy, that's a good one. I think it is very important to show not just benevolence, but to show people that have wronged you or that have been inappropriate or unkind or cruel, really anybody, show them the kindest you that you can in a moment of weakness that they have or a moment of suffering they feel or if they are in need of help, it's okay to help them. Because there are very few people in the world who cannot be reformed. Very few. Finding out if they can be is always important because of the, pos the possible and potential severity of their crimes and what they've done. But most people want to be good and to be wholesome but it's just that life has turned them away from that the best thing you can do is show them mercy show them benevolence and kindness because clearly they have not been given enough of that in their life you have to always know when to show that side of you and when not to but if you have a choice, choose kindness and mercy. Because it's what we all deserve. Even if we're not always the best of people.
integrated. It took me a very long time to feel like I was a member of society again. I guess from everything that I'd been through and feeling so distant and far apart from uh, from the world, from my family, from everything that seemed normal. I had gotten so swept up in my own emotions and my own negativity as back when I was much younger, almost 10 years younger even. Uh, and it took me a long time to realize that, you know, there's a way through all of this. There's a way to the other side. I had to fight myself more than anything else to make it to that other side, but I'm very close to reaching it these days. I can't say how close exactly, but closer than I've ever been. And it is through the aid of the people who have been able to help me integrate back into society. It's been through the aid of my friends on Second Life, my friends who have been there for me over so many years. It is through the help of my of the professionals in my life who have been there for me and through the help of my family who have suffered and rejoiced along with me. And now it's because of you people too. When I say you people, I mean the kind people who have taken the time to either hang out and chat or lurk quietly or just people who have followed. The people who have taken the time and the thought to be a part of this community. You guys do deserve all the gratitude I can give you. And truly I am blessed for each one of you. But enough about that. Let's move on to our next word. Another one about a family. Family is a necessity to a healthy mind. A family can be anything though. You can have a bunch of sticks and rocks and that could be your family if you needed it badly enough and were that desperate to find them. But if you have people in your life that you can tie a close bond to, tie a, a knot and a handhold to, who can be there and help you when you need it most. Those people, those are family, really whoever they are. Regardless of if they're blood related or not, that bind is tight. It's hard to break. And when you get that close, when you actually forge that union. It's special. It's a special thing. And you have to always remember to cherish it. Because there are not many people who get to experience family so clearly and so distinctly. You know, it's a special thing. And it's one of those things to be grateful for, for those bonds in your life that you have. Another thing that I will say is family can be helpful in more ways than just emotionally. And that's something I've learned too over the years. And I have difficulty asking for help, but everyone else in my family does too. <laughs> so when you have the chance, make sure you ask your family to help you, especially if you feel like you might not need it. <laughs> because that's the time that you might need it most. But enough about that.
we have just gotten to the hour mark in our stream. So that means we're going to take just five minutes to go use the restroom, get some water, stretch your legs, and come back. That's what I'm going to go do. I suggest you do it too. That's much better. All right, folks, we're back on. Yeah. Thank you very much. I hope you all had a lovely little 
trip to do your thing and got back just in time. Just like I did. Our next word. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. Our next word is effort. So some sort of effort that I've had to put in for some time is I, I've had to work really hard to stay focused and interested on things in my life. One of them being voice acting, essentially. Uh, a focus on something you love is easy, but on something that is like something you're not sure about yet, not certain about. Work, you could call it. Focusing my effort on work has been tremendously difficult for me. It doesn't help that I was not taught uh, a work ethic in my life, but on top of that, I was not properly educated on working, you know, a job or to follow through or to keep going. Foundational flaws, once again. My fundamentals have always been weak, and so I've had to struggle and fight just to be able to even keep up, fundamentally. Not to say that I haven't made it this far, sure, but maybe I would have struggled a little less if I had more help. That's all I can say. But my effort does go into art quite a bit. The art that I do, taking pictures, and typing to people, which I consider both of these things to be art, has certainly helped me a lot. I think that I have made a lot of progress through these things, and I'm grateful to be using my hands again, honestly. Really grateful. And I hope I'm able to continue doing that for a long time. And as for you folks out there, I hope there is something in your life that you're able to put plenty of your effort towards and that you are able to enjoy fully. Reputation. So, something I like very much. I'd like to garner a reputation for hard work, for good craftsmanship, and for lovely company. These are things I value very highly. I feel like a lot of work and a lot of talent goes into the things I make. I feel like I do a good job, which it's hard for me to say, but I force myself to, mind you. And craftsmanship is something that I value very highly. I value thoroughness and detail-oriented nature. And to imagine myself having a sterling reputation or glowing recommendations or kind things being said about me it makes me very happy it makes me gleeful and joyous and excited and it makes me feel so sure and confident about myself even if it's only for just a little bit it makes me feel like a stronger, better, more powerful person just in a moment's notice. It makes me feel great. I hope that you folks have something like that in your lives. And if you do, make sure you strive to have more of it. That's what I strive for, at least. One day, my reputation will be that strong, and I will be able to 
hear good things about the work I've done and the hard effort I've put in. I do look forward to those days. I really do. Embrace. So. There have been times in my life where I've had to embrace new ideas. One of the most important lessons I've had to embrace is the lesson that you could be wrong about anything. Sure, I feel a lot of truth and knowledge in what I say. I feel a lot of strength and, and certainty in the wholesomeness of humans, generally speaking, and the kindness of the average person. But I could be wrong. I accept that, and I, I think that it would be great if I'm never proven wrong, and if I can keep that value for a long, long time. But if I had to change it, you know, if I had to remove that from my thinking for even a little while, I would accept that. Because I know that situations could arise that might make that not the truth anymore. Though I hope that never happens, I would accept it if it did. Because I know that I would carry that torch with me of being a good person wherever I went. You know, it's a powerful and strong thing. And you can elevate other people with it. Even if I embrace the idea of unwholesomeness and lack of kindness, I would still keep with me that, that hope that things would get better. It's a drastic difference from now, uh, from how it used to be. It was an extreme personality change I went through from the age of almost 12 to the age of 25. A lot's gone on, a lot's changed. A lot has changed. <laughs> you know, I'm sure that everybody has gone through a lot of changes in that time though. But it just does shock me every now and again to look back to it. On to our next word. Courage. I feel like it takes me a lot of courage to get up here and say my thing every time. You know, I I get so nervous every time I do this. You know, I get so nervous. And every time I I just feel so worried about making a mistake or not feeling like I could do it. And, you know, you get so anxious and wound up. And after I say the first thing, after I say hello, everybody, it always goes away. <laughs> it's silly. Maybe a stage fright or warrior butterflies. Maybe both. But I know that actually coming on here and doing something and making a difference even if it's just in one person's night looking at you Ella <laughs> that's good enough it's good enough to just do one thing and even if it's not a huge thing even just a little bit can be great Acceptable. 
it has been a tough thing in my life to look at the things I've done as being acceptable because it is very easy sometimes to see the things you do as being just not good enough. You know, it's easy to not take pride in what you do and not see the beauty in the things you make. I think for me, a lot of that comes from the lack of worth I have always put in myself. But I think you have to have a lot of courage to see yourself as beautiful and the things you do as great and kind and wonderful. That's something I've had to do. It's been tough though, I'll be honest with you. It's been real tough. But actually being here and being in this place where I can come on on Saturdays and do something besides sit around and watch a YouTube Let's Play. Where I can be here and be me and be with all of you. I feel a little bit more whole than before. <laughs> I don't really know what that says about me and the things I've felt and done, but it feels like a good thing. You know, it feels like a right, righteous thing. And my hope is that the little lessons and inklings and grains of sand that I can impart on the people can help them understand the things that I didn't understand. Even at any age, you know, 12 and onward. Because going through a very difficult time in your life can always make you more aware of what things mean and what belongs where and what really is going on around you. It made me aware of myself and of the world. And I feel like Every time I do this, I take a step in the right direction, you know. I've always had difficulty coming out of my shell, but every week I come out a little bit, you know, just a little bit. And as somebody who's as shy and introverted as me, I guess that's a, it's a wonderful thing. <laughs> it's a very wonderful thing. But that's still something I have to convince myself of time and time again. to our next word. <laughs> Dove's feather is now following. Thank you so much, Dove. I almost didn't think you'd show up. Not to be cruel, but 
<laughs> I'm glad you did. Hello there. Glad to have you. One more lovely person to come and listen. Essential, that's a good word. We're just doing some random words here. I hope that you've had a lovely Christmas and holiday season, Dove, and that you are doing excellent today. And something else. Good mental health day today. Good. Very good. I'm so glad to hear that. It can be pretty tough sometimes getting through the holidays, but I, having good days is really worth it. And I've had bad days too, but today's been great. Today has been great. Something that's been essential to me is typing on the computer. Because I have a lot of things to say and I rarely get to get them out of me but when I type on the computer I always feel so much more free than before you know I always feel more accomplished and uh, lighthearted because of it I guess that's something that I have to do every now and again to make myself feel better and it does help me. It does really improve my mood. I enjoy it. It is essential for me. And something essential during this time of the year is to look in at yourself and to have some positivity about the way you're feeling and about who you are. So I'll help you out with that right now. I think that everybody has moments of doubt within themselves about who they are and what they're doing. But I think something really important to remember is that we're all human. That we're all facing so many trials that sometimes we have to just sit back and unwind and relax and take it easy just for a little while that we have to give ourselves a moment of respite. And we deserve that, all of us do. No matter who you are and what you've done, you deserve to have a moment to yourself for to contemplate or even just to understand what's going on. So, just make sure that you give yourself that, that self-love, because you're worth it. On to our next word. Fascinate. It's a good one. Something that used to fascinate me is sandboxes. Sandboxes were always really interesting to me. The idea that you could just have control over a certain area and do whatever you wanted with it. Just make it your own. Make it whatever you wanted it to be. And... I have always thought that that's the craziest, most interesting thing. But something that I have really actually had the chance to do is have uh, that kind of control and balance over myself. You have to balance it. But that kind of ability over your own mind and body and spirit alongside that. is 
It's all about what you believe and your, per your perception and perspective. Because the richest man, the strongest man, and the smartest man in the world can be miserable. And the poorest can be the happiest man in the world. It's strange that it works that way, right? What really matters, though, is what you see in the world, your perspective. Because the people around you, even you, you shape what you see in the world, for good or for bad. And you have to be the one to look at the world as it, as it, as it is to you. A world full of hope and chance. Redemption and kindness. Because so many of us don't get to feel those things from the depths and the purities that we should. You have to be the one to see those things, to make them real. That's our job, is to make our dreams come true, even if it's only 1% at a time. And the first step is believing. Believing in yourself and in kindness. Believing that tomorrow will be a better day than today. That's been something that's been really difficult for me though. <laughs> Believing in that sort of thing. I've had to fight to actually come to terms with any kind of belief like that. But here I am, talking to all of you folks. It's a great thing. something that we all have to work for. We have to push ourselves to get there. Reconcile, that's a good one. Something I've had to reconcile in myself. Has been feeling like I could accomplish things, you know? Feeling like I could have good days and could move on and enjoy myself. Like I could talk to people, be a part of the world. exist again, come back to life. That's been a challenge for me for a long time.
I think reconciliation is an important part of recovery. It's an important part of coming back to life. It took me a long time to get to the point that I'm at now. And reconciliation is a tough thing to actually get to. But when I finally reconciled the point that I'm trying to get to with the point I'm at now, I feel like it opened up a path for me. Getting there has been tough and hard and almost impossible sometimes, but when you do open yourself up, it changes you permanently. And that's something you can never really get rid of. But you don't want to when you have it because you feel good. You feel ready. You feel right. We're coming into the last quarter of our episode. And already, I'm grateful that we've gotten this far. But I'm grateful every time that we do this. It's hard for me to express my gratitude in full and completeness. Because I don't want to sound like a broken record, but I do feel it. You know, I do feel it. It's important to me to be in that position. Because it does help me feel a little bit better about being with you folks here on Saturday night. Just taking our time, going slow, taking things easy. Even on nights when we only have a few people here. It makes all the difference in the world to me to have even two people. Because those two people can change everything. Compromise. In a lot of different relationships, you have to compromise something to make it work. That's the truth in most of life, is you have to compromise to get to something. Some of the compromises I have made with myself have been about perfection, because perfectionists, they are blessed and cursed one with feeling like they have the energy to make something perfect and they always get close right they always get close to making it the perfect thing they want to but they never succeed making it perfect and that's hard to even describe because you know what does it even mean but to them to them it always at least to me I should say it always comes close but it's tough to actually get to perfect and I think if you come close that's good enough and that is a compromise is accepting when things are good enough 
good enough can also mean perfect sometimes. And that's a compromise that I had to learn. Something else I've had to compromise on is knowing the kind of stresses and the kind of impacts things can have on me. The stress of going to work, the stress of speaking to someone and confronting them. I am not a physically robust or a especially powerful speaker or oratory so what I have to do is I have to rely on my charisma and my personality and I have both of those things luckily I am very charismatic and personable But something that I have to accept is that I have limitations. That is a compromise to accept that. And something that I eventually accepted is I am slow and soft and chill. I'm not harsh and tough in that way. I'm soothing and comfortable and cozy. It's why I have taken up yoga because I don't really find myself looking for high impact, high stress, high performance stuff. I want something that works on me in sort of an intimate, individual kind of way. Something that has difficulty, but isn't just crazy high intensity. And you know what? It's working well because I don't feel exhausted when I'm done. I feel refreshed and invigorated. And it's a wonderful thing. I recommend Psyche Truth to anybody interested in yoga. They have a 30 day beginner playlist. And it is fantastic. I have been enjoying it quite a bit. Participate. There have been things in my life where I have been wary to participate in them because it has been so strenuous for me to even imagine being involved that I find myself sort of set aside and dissociated from where I was and where I, I was at the moment. So much so that I couldn't actually engage with anybody. And those moments are kind of like floating down a river. It's almost lazy. It's almost removed from everything. And you do that to protect yourself. And I did that a lot. And for a while, I actually couldn't stop doing it. Hey, Ginny. Sorry, we're, we're glad to have you. It's all right if you're late. We're just coming into the last half, and so you're not, you're not late to be here at all. We're glad to have you.
Speaking of which, Jenny, if you haven't already followed, you should consider him. I think he'd like what we do here. You see, this is an awesome thing, all of us gathered here together. And the more people we have, the better. You'll have to forgive me for the background noise. There's a lot going on in the house right now. I hope it's not too distracting for you folks. Jenny, I hope that you had a lovely Christmas. And that you're having a lovely day. Because I haven't gotten to speak to you nearly at all. On to our next word. Proud. <laughs> That's a good one. Being proud is a remarkable privilege. I think that having pride in what you do, thank you, I made sure to treat myself to some of my favorite food, so it was an okay Christmas. I'm so glad to hear that, Ginny. That's all we can really ask for these days, isn't it? <laughs> Oh, excuse me. <laughs> that one just sort of came up on me. But yeah. Being proud of who you are and what you've accomplished. Like, I feel proud that I've made it to nine weeks of doing this. Because that beats my old record of eight weeks of doing voice acting straight. And I don't know how much further I'm going to be able to go, but I'm going to keep going as long as I can. And I hope that my work does pay off sometime soon, but it might be a while, and I accept that. It's good to be here with you folks. Qualification. I wondered for quite some time if I was capable and able and you know, qualified to do a job like this, to come out here and talk to all of you fine folks. I wondered if that was something I could do effectively and if I was able. And I think that, honestly, I'm quite capable, quite qualified. I don't think that I have any shortcomings when it comes to talking to people and being here and hopeful and present. I think that I have a lot of insight to offer and that I am able to help people. Though I like to joke around a little too much sometimes. I think that generally people speak to me and they have a good time. I think there's always more to improve, but I think I was born and I have self-raised myself enough to be able to do well, have a good time, and make it right. And certainly, I'm really glad to have gotten as far as I have already. It's a tough thing to 
make it to 25 in this society, but I've done it, you know? Somehow I've done it. And I'm grateful for that. I'm also... I'm also happy that I have been able to come so far in my life. You know? Because getting out and being this active and this close and this far to a dream, even if it's a small dream like mine, it makes a world of difference. And I admit my dream is pretty small to just help people and the live a comfortable life. I think it means so much to have people to be here and listen to it. And I hope it does amount to something that I can be proud of. And it always helps to have people here to bounce off of and to talk to and react to. It's one of my favorite things. It is a favorite of mine. And I look forward to doing it for a long time still. Let's move on to our next word. Comfort. I feel like a lot of the time I have found immense comfort in being able to be here with my friends and with you people, wherever you are, whoever you are. It feels good to me to To just speak, you know, to be open and honest and to confront my feelings of uh, being shy and being afraid of speaking with people, even if it's in a small way, because this is pretty safe, right? This is pretty tame. For the most part. Besides, like, a troll or something else, there's not a lot that could go wrong here. And it does help me to know that this is a really sp safe space for everybody. And, you know, the time will come one day when I'll need a bot to ensure that we don't get trolled or anything like that. But for right now, we don't have to worry about those things. And that's quite fine with me. Slow going at first but that's the same with anything on the internet. I hope that I can look back on this in a few years and see where it all began. And feel comfort at knowing that there's still much more to go. That's what I hope for. Let's move on to our next word. Prestige, that's a good one. So I think everybody wants the, not everybody, excuse me. I think anyone who is a workaholic 
wants to feel the prestige of doing a good job and of succeeding and of putting time in and doing the grind. And I am a workaholic myself. It's just I have put that out of myself so much that it's hard for me to remember what it's like to be a workaholic, to be in this position again. But, you know, I do crave actually doing these things, actually performing and being around. I crave having people listen to me and my message getting out there. I crave performance. I feel like it is something that I need in my life to perform. And I feel like it helps me every time, like I've said. And you know, this is a special kind of place for just us. Something to help you get to sleep or help you relax on a Saturday night, just before bed or when you can't quite fall asleep. That's what this is for. And we're going to go as far as we can together. As far as we can. And I think we can go pretty far together. I really do. Let's move on to our last word. Audience, it's perfect. So, I think that there is a, there is a mental influence of having an audience, right? Of knowing that you're being watched and knowing that you're entertaining people and that you're on the stage with the light on you. And I feel it, you know, I, I feel it and enjoy it. I, I feel the power of it and the, the enjoyment and the, not, maybe it's not a rush for me, but certainly the pleasantry that comes from having this in my life. And it isn't pleasantry for me, it is a good thing, as I've said before. But the audience does so much for me, it makes me feel like I matter and that I'm relevant. You know, that I have an effect on people and that I can actually sort of be there and be real, if that makes sense. And you folks give me that, that opportunity. That's the best I can ask for. All right, folks. We've come to the end of our time. We have only five minutes left. I'd like to say thank you to everybody who has been here and in chat. I'd like to thank Ella, my friend, for coming to visit me and for staying in chat this whole time. I'm very grateful to you, Ella, and I hope we can talk again soon. 
I'd like to think to thank Dove. Dove, I know that you're new to the stream, but we're glad to have you. And I hope that you can make a return next week as well. And thank you to Ginny, my good friend. <laughs> you're welcome, Ella. Ginny, I, I don't know if you could stay for the whole thing, but I'm so glad that you could be here, and I'm so glad that you could show up and make your mark. I always miss hearing from you th throughout the day, and I'm always glad when you show up. We are on episode 9, and there was going to be... <laughs> I'm happy you were able to come as well. There was going to be a special surprise for episode 10, but it's going to be moved back probably either a week or two. So we'll see when that happens. And as for content for the rest of um, the month, uh, we are done for, yeah, for the year of 2020. It's over. We're moving on, and 2021 is a new, fresh year for this stream and for this channel. We're going to start streaming stories and books throughout the week, probably on Tuesdays and Thursdays at around the same time at 7.30 for probably around an hour. And these will be available to uh, jump in and enjoy my voice for a little while and my company. And it'll just be a little bit, just a little bit added on to the week. And we're going to see how that works. And that'll be something we add to the stream. Just for a little while. So all of you out there who have fallen asleep. I hope you have pleasant dreams. All of you out there who are relaxing and getting ready for bed. I hope you get to sleep. Soon. And for those of you who are just relaxing or either meditating or taking it easy. I hope that you'll come join us again. I haven't gotten you this time. Oh, next time. Next time I will though, okay? I'll bet you I will. Make sure that you enjoy the rest of your day and take care. Oh, thank you so much. Big hugs to you too, Dove. Thank you guys for coming. Stay safe. And take care. See you next week.